What's up, my average med students? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be covering Neurology from the Zanke Step 2 deck. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified of future posts. Happy studying. 1. Tabes dorsalis is a spinal cord lesion that is caused by tertiary syphilis and involves degeneration of the dorsal columns and roots. Hence, this will present with impaired sensation and proprioception and progressive sensory ataxia. 2. Central cord syndrome is a spinal cord injury that is commonly seen in the elderly following forced hyperextension of the neck. For example, a rear end collision results in paralysis in the upper extremities, burning pain in the upper extremities. Preservation of most functions in the lower extremities may be accompanied by localized deficit in pain and temperature sensation. Typically occurs with hyperextension injuries in elderly patients with pre-existing degenerative changes in the cervical spine. 3. Sidenam's chorea is a neurological feature of acute rheumatic fever that presents with emotional instability and involuntary movements. 4. Which type of primary headache may occasionally present with Horner syndrome? Cluster headache. 5. What is the diagnostic test for pseudotumor cerebri benign, idiopathic intracranial hypertension? Lumbar puncture with normal CSF but increased opening pressure. Remember, a negative CT or MRI is also required. 6. Which vitamin toxicity can be a cause of pseudotumor cerebri idiopathic intracranial hypertension? Vitamin and withdraw vitamin supplementation if this is suspected. 7. A patient with multiple sclerosis develops worsening focal neurological deficits while on chronic suppressive therapy. New MRI shows new, multiple white matter lesions. Which drug is most likely to have caused this? Natalizumab it targets Integrin 4. It has been known to predispose to progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy PML. 8. A patient presents with muscle atrophy, fasciculations of the tongue and extremities, upwards Babinski and hyperreflexia of the extremities. Which demyelinating disorder is the most likely diagnosis? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, know the signs of UMN and LMN lesions. Involves asymmetric UMN and LMN lesions, with LMN symptoms predominating in later stages. Typically spares the eyes and sphincters. There is no sensory loss no matter what the gunner says on rounds. Other symptoms may include emotional lability and weight loss. 9. A patient with no myasthenia gravis presence to the emergency room in life-threatening condition. She has diffuse, severe, overwhelming muscle weakness with respiratory involvement. Aside from intubation, what is the next best step? IVIG or plasmapheresis? Don't forget to manage and protect the airways. This is an acute myasthenic crisis. 10. How do the brain CT findings in Alzheimer's disease differ from Pick's disease? Alzheimer's has diffuse cortical atrophy parietal and temporal Parkinson's has frontal and hypothalamic degeneration frontal and temporal. 11. Which organic cause of dementia is associated with the triad of urinary incontinence, ataxic gait, and dementia? Normal pressure hydrosphalus NPH. Think wet, wobbly, and wacky due to decreased CSF absorption. 12. What is the most effective treatment for stopping an acute attack of a cluster headache? 100% oxygen ergotamines and tryptans are effective but not as rapid acting as 100% oxygen. 13. Tick-borne paralysis is characterized by rapidly progressive ascending paralysis, absence of fever and sensory abnormalities, and normal CSF exam. The next best step is a meticulous search for a tick and removal of tick results in spontaneous improvement in most patients. Guillain bar may be hard to distinguish but is usually not as rapid, CSF abnormalities, and autonomic dysfunction. A meticulous tick exam is easy to perform and should be done first. 14. A brain that is seized for greater than 5 minutes. Status epilepticus is at increased risk for cortical laminar necrosis due to excitatory toxicity. Can lead to persistent neurologic deficits and recurrent seizures. 15. An elderly patient presents complaining of back pain. He states that the pain shoots down his right leg, but is alleviated when he is hunched over forward. You suspect spinal stenosis. What is the best diagnostic test? MRI X-ray will show degenerative joint changes, but MRI is the best confirmatory test. 16. A patient has fever, headache, and a stiff neck. CT scan rules out intracranial mass, so an LP is safely performed. LP rules out bacterial meningitis. The patient also has a targetoid rash in recent travel to the Northeast American coast. Lyme antibody testing returns positive. What is the most appropriate next step in management? IV ceftriaxone, not doxycycline, which is used for Lyme arthralgia, not Lyme meningitis. 17. Lateral femoral cutaneous nerve compression causes pain and paresthesias over the anterior lateral thigh. Also called neuralgia paresthetica, it may be precipitated by a sudden increase in weight, an injury, or during pelvic surgery. 18. Tetanus toxin tetanospasmin travels via retrograde transport to the spinal cord. GABA and glycine are inhibitory neurotransmitters. Therefore, there is a lack of motor inhibition leading to spastic paralysis versus botulism is due to inhibition of its excitatory release, causing flaccid paralysis. 20. Cleavage of snare proteins via tetanus toxins inhibits the release of GABA and glycine from Renshaw cells in the spinal cord. 
GABA and glycine are inhibitory neurotransmitters. Therefore, there is a lack of motor inhibition. Greater than spastic paralysis botulism is due to inhibition of acetylcholine excitatory release, causing flaccid paralysis. 21. Does cleavage of snare via botulinum toxin prevent release of excitatory or inhibitory neurotransmitters? Excitatory thus causing descending flaccid paralysis. 22. A 42-year-old man has been fired from his job because of inappropriate behavior. For the past two months he has gradually developed very severe, explosive headaches that are located on the right side, above the eye. Neurologic exam shows optic nerve atrophy on the right, papilledema on the left, and anosmia. What is the most appropriate imaging study? MRI Foster Kennedy syndrome tumor and frontal lobe right-sided in this patient. 23. An elderly man is involved in a rear-end automobile collision. He develops paralysis and burning pain of both upper extremities while maintaining good motor function in his legs. What is the most likely diagnosis? Central cord syndrome may be accompanied by localized deficit in pain and temperature sensation, typically occurs with hyperextension injuries in elderly patients with pre-existing degenerative changes in the cervical spine spinal cord injuries 1. Complete spinal cord injury, complete loss of motor and sensory function below level of lesion 2. Round sequard, clean cut injury knife blade, ipsilateral paralysis and proprioception loss, contralateral pain and temp loss 3. Central cord syndrome, elderly with forced hyperextension of neck rear end collision, paralysis, burning, loss of sensation in upper extremities, but distal extremities are spared for. Anterior cord syndrome, burst fractures of vertebral bodies, distal paraplegia, bilateral loss of pain, temp, preservation of vibration and position dorsal column unaffected. 24. What drug is used for chronic pain greater than 15 per month in tension headaches? Amitriptyline analgesics, NSAIDs, or acetaminophen may be used acutely. 25. All ischemic stroke patients should be given aspirin as prophylaxis for secondary stroke. Aspirin is the only antiplatelet agent that is effective in reducing risk of early recurrence of ischemic stroke. Aspirin plus dipiridamol or clopidogrel is recommended for patients who have recurrent stroke on aspirin therapy. 26. A patient has a stroke and an aspirin sensitivity. What drugs can be substituted in place of the aspirin? Clopidogrel or dipiridamol? 27. A patient has a stroke and is given aspirin as prophylaxis against a secondary stroke. They subsequently experience another stroke. What antiplatelet medications should now be administered? Aspirin in addition to clopidogrel or dipiridamol. 28. What nerve injury is caused by tight clothing, obesity, and pregnancy? Lateral femoral cutaneous neuralgia paresthetica decreased anterior and lateral thigh sensation. 29. What movements are lost with peroneal nerve lesions? Diversion and dorsiflexion foot drop pet equals peroneal everts and dorsiflexes. 30. IFNZ is a therapy useful for multiple sclerosis that may produce a flu-like syndrome. 31. What is the most common urologic abnormality affecting patients with multiple sclerosis? Etrusor overactivity overactive bladder, urge incontinence not overflow incontinence, although it can occur in both. 32. What is the gold standard for diagnosis of MS? MRI demyelinating paraventricular plaques plus clinically based diagnosis. What if the MRI is unequivocal? LP and CSF analysis for all agoclonal IgG bands plus high IgG index MRI is the most sensitive test and diagnostic in most cases. 33. Aerogenic claudication is the hallmark of lumbar spinal stenosis. How will it present? Symptoms exacerbated with upright posture further narrows spinal canal, relieved with sitting or flexion of waist shopping cart sign. Tolerate cycling look closely and the question stems for better when walking uphill or something relating to relief when bending forward conversely, it will be worse when walking downhill. 34. Rapid diagnosis, ptosis, muscle weakness worse at end of day, dysphagia or dysarthria myasthenia gravis extraocular muscles and mastication muscles are two most often used muscular activities. 35. What imaging tests should be done for myasthenia gravis? Chest CT to look for thymoma. Or thymic hyperplasia to diagnose, antibodies are highly specific. After diagnosis, obtain CT to rule out thymoma. 36. What is the diagnostic test of choice in patients with suspected spinal epidural abscess fever, back pain? MRI of spine high sensitivity in early disease, excellent localization of infection extent. 37. Rapid diagnosis, patient presence with ataxia, peripheral neuropathy, and a small pupil that does not respond to light but constricts with accommodation. Most likely diagnosis, Tabes dorsalis tertiary syphilis argyle robertson, accommodates but does not constrict. 38. Rapid diagnosis, dizziness triggered by episodic positional changes. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. 39. The dix Hallpike maneuver is a provoking maneuver that can help in the diagnosis of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Extend and rotate head then put in supine position. If nystagmus and vertigo present equals dysfunction in ear that is turned downward keep patient supine 30 seconds if no nystagmus then return upright and observe 30 seconds for nystagmus repeat other side. 41. 
Patient with vertigo undergoes the Dick's Hallpike maneuver. The head is extended and rotated to the right. Patient is placed in supine position, and nystagmus is seen. How do you interpret this? Plus for BPPV benign paroxysmal peripheral vertigo. Right-sided canal dysfunction dysfunction is present in ear turned downward. 42. What maneuver can be performed to relieve symptoms of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo BPPV? Epley repositioning maneuver can be watched on YouTube. Epley maneuver animation rotate head and put in supine then 30 seconds then rotate head to opposite side then 30 seconds then have patient turn on side and look down in 30 seconds then lastly have them sit upright. 43. Many air diseases a triad of vertigo, tinnitus, and hearing loss. 45. Peripheral facial palsy Bell's palsy is an acute peripheral neuropathy of cranial nerve 7 below the pons. Above the pons equals preservation of forehead and brow movements, do brain imaging to evaluate for ischemia and tumors. 46. A patient presents with mouth drooping. She can wrinkle her forehead and close her eyes. What test should be done? Central facial palsy forehead sparing, brain imaging for ischemia or tumors. 47. Rapid diagnosis, strong feeling of pain, emotion, nausea, blurry vision, diaphoresis followed by a syncopal episode. Neurocardiogenic vasovagal syncope. 48. What features are unique to lateral medullary syndrome Wallenberg? All due to effect on nucleus ambigu CN9, 10, 11 dysphagia hoarseness decreased gag reflex don't peek a horse that can't eat. 49. Rapid diagnosis, young, obese female, headache, papilledema on fundoscopy idiopathic intracranial hypertension pseudotumor cerebri high opening pressure on LP. 50. Underlying pathology of lacanar strokes are due to a combination of microatheroma formation and lipoyalinosis that lead to small vessel occlusion, commonly deep penetrating arteries of the brain. 51. What stroke syndromes are associated with lacanar infarcts? Pure motor internal capsule or pure sensory thalamus total hemiparesis. 52. What is the treatment of Guillain-Barr syndrome? Intravenous immunoglobulin IVIG or plasmapheresis are equal in efficacy do not give steroids. Do not combine IVIG and plasmapheresis. 53. A patient with a left MCA stroke will present with aphasia. A patient with a right MCA stroke will present with hemianglect or anisognosia lack of awareness regarding one's illness. Hemianglect is due to lesion in non-dominant hemisphere patient will neglect the left side for example patient may only shave the right side of their face or lift their right arm. Usually affects the right parietal lobe. 55. Rapid diagnosis, patient stretches out and extends arm with palms up and closes their eyes. The left arm drifts downwards and palm turns towards the floor. Where is the lesion? UMN lesion corticospinal or pyramidal tract UMN lesions cause weakness in supinator more than the pronator muscles of upper limb, causing affected arm to drift downward and pronate. 56. What medications are used in the treatment of neuroleptic malignant syndrome? Dantrolene, bromocryptine, amantadine. 57. What symptom is characteristic of early Alzheimer's disease? Short-term memory loss later symptoms include impaired long-term memory and cognitive abilities, which interrupt activities of daily living. 58. What CT finding may be found in patients with late-stage Alzheimer's disease? Diffuse cortical and subcortical atrophy leading to classically temporal and parietal atrophy imaging should primarily be used to exclude alternative causes of dementia. 59. What is the treatment of choice for acute exacerbations of multiple sclerosis with disabling neurologic symptoms, sensory loss, urinary incontinence, vision loss? Corticosteroids plasmapheresis may be considered in patients refractory to corticosteroids. 60. Thrombolytic therapy for example TPA is indicated for patients with ischemic stroke if given within 3 to 4.5 hours of symptom onset. A non-contrast head CT must be performed first to rule out hemorrhagic stroke. Other contraindications are listed below. 61. One contraindication to TPA administration in stroke patients is VP greater than 185 over 110 mmHg. 62. What is the likely location of hemorrhage in a patient that presents with occipital headache, neck stiffness, nausea, vomiting, and ipsilateral hemotaxia without hemiparesis? Cerebellum. Remember that tracks from the cerebellum decussate twice, thus there are ipsilateral symptoms. 63. The initial diagnostic workup of a first-time seizure in an adult should include laboratory tests to evaluate for metabolic and toxic causes. For example, basic blood tests electrolytes, glucose, calcium, magnesium, CBC, LFTs, and a toxicology screen. Unprovoked seizures may warrant neuroimaging and or electroencephalogram. 65. Which stroke subtype is characterized by early focal neurologic symptoms that worsen over minutes to hours with possible features of increased ICP for example vomiting, headache, reduced alertness. Intracerebral hemorrhagic stroke typically seen in patients with a history of uncontrolled hypertension. Symptoms progress over minutes to hours. 66. Which stroke subtype is characterized by abrupt neurological symptoms that are typically maximal at the start? Embolic ischemic stroke intracerebral hemorrhage evolves over a course of minutes to hours. 67. 
which artery is likely affected in a stroke resulting in motor, sensory deficits in the lower limb and urinary incontinence. Anterior cerebral artery urinary incontinence due to involvement of the frontal micturition center. Anterior cerebral artery strokes may also present with primitive reflexes and behavioral symptoms don't forget your homunculus scroll down. Anterior cerebral artery loss will affect the lower extremities. 68. Strokes involving the anterior cerebral artery typically cause motor and or sensory loss that is most pronounced in the contralateral lower limb. Remember your homunculus. 69. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient that presents with worsening back pain, especially at night, and bilateral lower extremity weakness, sensory loss, and gait ataxia for the past week? Spinal cord compression bowel and bladder disturbances are late findings. 70. Alcoholic cerebellar degeneration is caused by damage to the Perkins cells in the anterior cerebellar vermis. 71. Manifestations of acute angle closure glaucoma include unilateral eye pain with conjunctival injection at a dilated, non-reactive pupil. 72. Acute angle closure glaucoma is characterized by sudden vision loss with halos around lights. 73. Manifestations of acute angle closure glaucoma include unilateral eye pain with conjunctival injection at a dilated, non-reactive pupil. 74. What neurological pathology typically presents with nerve damage in two or more nerves in separate parts of the body in a patient with vasculitis? Mononeuritis multiplex typically manifests as asymmetric peripheral nerve findings, such as wrist and foot drop. 75. What is the initial drug of choice for symptomatic treatment of myasthenia gravis? Pyridostigmine long-acting acetylcholine steroids inhibitor if symptomatic despite pyridostigmine. Chronic immunosuppressive therapy for example corticosteroids may be warranted. 78. What is the first-line pharmacotherapy for Tabes dorsalis? IV penicillin. 79. Which type of syncope is often preceded by nausea, bradycardia, and, or a feeling of warmth throughout the body? There are cardiogenic vasovagal syncope secondary to excessive vagal tone. Triggers include prolonged standing, emotional distress, and painful stimuli. 80. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient that develops persistent headache, confusion, difficulty concentrating, and poor sleep for the past month after hitting their head? Post-concussive syndrome. Other manifestations include amnesia, vertigo, and mood alterations. Symptoms typically resolve with symptomatic treatment within a few weeks to months following the TBI. 81. What neurological pathology manifests is Parkinsonism with orthostatic hypotension, impotence, incontinence, or other autonomic dysfunction. Multiple system atrophy shy drager syndrome triad of motor abnormalities Parkinsonian features, autonomic dysfunction incontinence, orthostatic hypotension, erectile dysfunction, and cerebellar symptoms ataxia anti-Parkinsonism drugs are generally ineffective. Treatment is aimed at intravascular volume expansion for example flood cortisone, salt supplements. 82. Can a patient be diagnosed with brain death if they have intact deep tendon reflexes? Yes, brain death is characterized by absent cortical and brain stem function. The spinal cord may still be functioning neurologic exam for brain death. Coma with known cause absence of brainstem reflexes below apnea medulla. Removal of ventilation leads to increase in PCO2 resulting in intact brainstem causes reflexive increase in breathing efforts. What reflexes are absent in brain death? Pupillary, midbrain, vestibulocular, corneal pons, gag, and cough. Which reflexes are present? Deep tendon reflexes spinal cord still intact. 83. What is the pharmacotherapy of choice for the treatment of acute agitation in elderly patients, for example, delirium? Typical or atypical antipsychotics, for example, low-dose haloperidol benzodiazepines are relatively contraindicated in older patients. 84. Typical antipsychotics should not be used in patients with Lewy body dementia because they may exhibit neuroleptic hypersensitivity. Neuroleptic administration can cause severe Parkinsonism and impaired consciousness. 85. What is the underlying pathophysiologic cause of Wernicke encephalopathy? Thiamine B1 deficiency. 86. What is the recommended treatment for Wernicke encephalopathy? Thiamine prior to or along with glucose administration. 87. What test is needed to definitely rule out subarachnoid hemorrhage in patients with a normal CT scan? Lumbar puncture may show xanthochromia. 88. What pathogen is the most common cause of spinal epidural abscess? Staphylococcus aureus 65%. Classically presents with a triad of fever, focal, severe back pain, and neurologic findings. 89. What is the diagnostic test of choice for spinal epidural abscess? MRI of the spine. 90. What retinal pathology is associated with AV nicking, copper, silver wiring, and or flame hemorrhages on fundoscopy? Hypertensive retinopathy. 91. Symptoms of increased intracranial pressure include headache that is worse in the morning, nausea or vomiting, and mental status changes. The headache classically worsens throughout the night while lying supine, waking the patient up in their sleep. 92. Which anti-epileptic medications the 2nd of may be used for migraine prophylaxis? 
Topper M8 and Valproic Acid. 93. Riluzole is a glutamate inhibitor that is approved for use in patients with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis ALS. Extends survival time and or time to tracheostomy. 96. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient that experiences multiple episodes of transient, monocular vision loss described as a curtain falling over the eye? Amaurosis fugax most commonly due to atherosclerotic emboli from the ipsilateral carotid artery. 97. What test is most likely to reveal the underlying etiology of amaurosis fugax? Duplex ultrasound of the neck most commonly due to atherosclerotic emboli from the ipsilateral carotid artery. 98. Etaminal basal ganglia hemorrhage often results in contralateral hemiparesis and hemisensory loss due to involvement of the adjacent internal capsule. Also may present with conjugate gaze deviation towards the lesion due to involvement of the frontal eye fields. 99. What time of day is typically associated with worsening delirium? Nighttime, sundowning thus management of delirium should include minimizing disturbances at night. 100. What is the likely diagnosis in a patient that presents with monocular vision loss accompanied by washed-out color vision, afferent pupillary defect, and painful eye movements? CT scan is normal. Optic neuritis not uncommon for a CT scan to be normal, especially early in multiple sclerosis. Afferent pupillary defect Marcus Gunn pupil exam shows paradoxical pupillary dilation of the affected eye for example. Right eye dilates in response to light. Washed out color vision is a central scotoma. 101. What is the likely diagnosis in an elderly patient that presents with marked weakness in the upper extremities compared to the lower following a motor vehicle accident? Central cord syndrome may be accompanied by localized deficit in pain and temperature sensation, typically occurs with hyperextension injuries in elderly patients with pre-existing degenerative changes in the cervical spine. Spinal cord injuries. 1. Complete spinal cord injury, complete loss of motor and sensory function below level of lesion. 2. Brown sequard, clean-cut injury knife blade, ipsilateral paralysis and proprioception loss, contralateral pain and temp loss. 3. Central cord syndrome, elderly with forced hyperextension of neck rear end collision, paralysis, burning, loss of sensation in upper extremities, but distal extremities are spared. 4. Anterior cord syndrome, burst fractures of vertebral bodies, distal paraplegia, bilateral loss of pain, temp, preservation of vibration and position dorsal column unaffected. 102. Which microorganism is the most frequent precipitant of Guillain-Barr syndrome? Campylobacter jejuni. 103. What is the next step in management for a patient that presents with warfarin-associated intracerebral hemorrhage? IV vitamin K and prothrombin complex concentrate PCC. PCC results in rapid reversal of warfarin. Fresh frozen plasma can be considered if PCC is not available. 104. Common early side effects of levodopa. Carbidopa include dizziness, headache, agitation, and visual hallucinations. Involuntary movements, for example dyskinesia, typically occur after 5 to 10 years of therapy. 105. Cortical laminar necrosis is a hallmark of prolonged seizures and can lead to persistent neurologic deficits and recurrent seizures. Occurs due to excitatory cytotoxicity, appears as cortical hyperintensity on diffusion weighted imaging. 106. What is the next best choice in management of choice in a patient that presents to the ED after an unprovoked first seizure who fell on the sidewalk? CBC, electrolytes, cervical spine imaging, and urine toxicology are all normal. CT head without contrast must rule out acute neurologic problems for example. Bleed, MRI is more sensitive for identifying structural causes of epilepsy and the imaging modality of choice in elective situations. Rule out structural brain lesions before EEG obviously, don't pick CT head within contrast. That shit takes time and this patient fell, possibly hitting his head. 107. The most common site of ulnar nerve entrapment is where the ulnar nerve lies in the medial epicondylar groove elbow. Results in decreased sensations over the fourth and fifth digits and weak grip extremely high yield for USMLE as per U world. 108. What is the likely diagnosis in a trauma patient with a head CT revealing numerous small punctate hemorrhages at the gray-white junction? Diffuse axonal injury due to sudden acceleration deceleration injury for example motor vehicle accident. 109. Does cauda equina syndrome present with upper or lower motor neuron symptoms? Lower only helpful distinguishing feature from Canu's medullaris syndrome, with causes both upper and lower motor neuron symptoms. 110. Does Canu's medullaris syndrome present with upper or lower motor neuron symptoms? Both upper and lower helpful distinguishing feature from cauda equina syndrome, which causes lower motor neuron symptoms only. 111. What is the recommended pharmacotherapy for Alzheimer's dementia? Acetylcholine sterase inhibitors, for example, Donpazil, Rivastigmine may provide moderate symptom relief and temporarily improve functioning. However, long term disease course remains unaltered. 112. Foodborne botulism in adults is associated with ingestion of improperly canned foods and aged seafood, for example, cured fish. 113. 
Once a diagnosis of myasthenia gravis is established, patients should receive a CT or MRI of the chest to evaluate for thymoma. Thymectomy can result in long-term disease remission in patients with a thymoma or thymic hyperplasia. 114. Pseudodementia refers to cognitive impairment that is secondary to major depressive disorder. 115. What neurological side effect is associated with vincristine use? Peripheral neuropathy Other common causative agents of peripheral neuropathy include platinum-based medications, for example cisplatin and taxanes, for example paclitaxel. 116. What CSF findings are associated with HSV encephalitis? Protein. High glucose, normal WBC, high lymphocytes RBC. High increased RBCs due to hemorrhagic destruction of temporal lobes. 117. What is the next step in management for a patient that develops a cardioembolic stroke secondary to bacterial endocarditis? IV antibiotics and observation surgery is indicated if a patient develops CHF or recurrent infection. Embolism draw blood cultures before antibiotics. 118. Carotid endarterectomy should be considered for symptomatic patients, for example, T. Stroke with carotid stenosis between 70 to 99% to reduce future stroke risk. Patients with disabling neurologic deficits, 100% occlusion of the carotid artery, or life expectancy lesser than 5 years are unlikely to benefit. 119. What is the treatment for acute, episodic tension headaches? NSAIDs but if it's chronic, then treat with amitriptyline. 120. What is the prophylaxis for cluster headaches? Verapamil. What is the prophylaxis for migraine headaches? Propranolol. Valpro. Topiramate prophylaxis. Verapamil gets cluster headaches. Valpro gets migraine. 121. Subclavian steel syndrome typically arises due to severe stenosis of the proximal subclavian artery, causing reversal of blood flow in the ipsilateral vertebral artery. Typically asymptomatic but may cause symptoms of upper extremity ischemia for example. Pain, paresthesias and vertebrobasilar insufficiency for example dizziness, ataxia that are worse with exercise. Rapid diagnosis, patient with 4 months of cognitive decline, weight loss, and pulse 54 divided by min. Evaluate TSH to check for hypothyroidism cognitive decline can be present in up to 90% of hypothyroid patients. Evaluate all patients with dementia with TSH, B12, LFTs, depression, RPR. 123. What are the clinical features of delirium? Cognitive impairment, memory loss, acute altered mental status, waxes and wanes leading to acute fluctuations in level of awareness and attention diagnostics, CBC, glucose, electrolytes, urine analysis, toxicology, neuroimaging CT or MRI treatment. Treat underlying cause haloperidol if the patient is agitated so avoid benzos. Deliriogenic. 124. What vitamin deficiency should always be screened for in patients with dementia? Vitamin B12 cobalamin endocrine abnormality. Hypothyroidism imaging in all patients. Non-contrast CT or MRI to detect reversible causes of dementia. 125. Severe Alzheimer's. Treatment of mild moderate 13 to 24 Alzheimer's. Donpazil, galantamine, rivastigmine severe Alzheimer's. Memantine and MDA antagonist. Mnemonic for Alzheimer's meds, I don't actually remember the gal by the river. Dompazil, tacrine, memantine, galantamine, and rivastigmine. 126. Rapid diagnosis. 50-year-old male becomes easily agitated, hypersexual, and severe change in personality. Fix frontoporal dementia. CT scan shows frontoporal degeneration. 127. Prutzfeldt Jakob pathogenesis, prion disease spongiform encephalopathy symptoms, any age, rapid onset dementia plus myoclonus diagnostics, CSF analysis 1433 protein, MRI EEG, trophasic periodic sharp wave complexes treatment supportive, palliative care dead within 6 to 12 months. 128. Normal pressure hydrosphalus pathogenesis, increased ICP-2 out of 2 CSF absorption symptoms, wet, wobbly, wacky wet, urinary incontinence wobbly, ataxia wacky, dementia diagnosis, CT to MRI dilation of ventricles LP confirmatory and therapeutic treatment, improvement of symptoms with LP confirms diagnosis ventriculopritonal shunt if patient responds to LP. 129. What is the management of delirium? Treat underlying cause, avoid polypharmacy, physical restraint. Reduce exposure to risk factors, interact with family members, encourage activity during day and reduce nighttime disturbances haloperidol for agitation what management is contraindicated in delirium. Benzodiazepines deliriogenic maintaining a normal sleep cycle is important in delirium and dementia. 130. A 50-year-old male presence with headaches, nausea, vomiting, and personality change. CT is shown below. Glioblastoma multiform butterfly appearance. 131. 
What is the most likely diagnosis in a young obese female with headache, normal neuroimaging, elevated CSF pressure, and bilateral papilledema? Pseudotumor cerebri treatment. Acetazolamide first line, weight reduction complications. Blindness, 132. Rapid diagnosis, holosphalic headache with neck tightness tension headaches episodic lesser than 14 mo. Treat with NSAIDs acutely, chronic headaches are prophylaxed with amitriptyline. TCAS if the headaches are infrequent plus treat with analgesics. When more debilitating, treat with prophylactic meds, amitriptyline. 133. Rapid diagnosis, unilateral headache with photophobia, pulsatile. Proceeding by tingling in arm. Migraine. Treat with NSAIDs then escalate to tryptans or ergots. 134. Rapid diagnosis, unilateral eye pain and headache with increased lacrimation, horners. Patient is restless, agitated. Diagnosis and treatment. Cluster headache, O2 therapy plus tryptans. 135. What is the treatment for migraines? If it's mild then give NSAIDs. If it's moderate to severe or refractory then treat with tryptans or ergots like dihydroergotamine. If they have nausea or vomiting then you treat them with antiemetics. Vomiting decreases oral absorption of NSAIDs. Prochloropyrazine, chlorpromazine prophylaxis. Propranolol anti-seizure, valprote, topiramatet CAS amitriptyline. 136. What tremor becomes worse bilaterally with voluntary movement for example reaching for glass and resolves with rest? Essential tremor treatment. Propranolol. 137. What drugs can produce extrapyramidal syndrome? Antipsychotics, metoclopramide symptoms, acute dystonia, painful muscle spasms, torticollis, head, neck, tongue akathisia, Parkinsonism, tardive dyskinesia, repetitive chewing, lip smacking. 138. Adrenoleukodystrophy is due to a mutation in the app binding cassette transporter and presence in young males with cognitive impairment, progressive vision, hearing, motor deterioration, and adrenal insufficiency. Patient is usually a young male, decreased vision, hearing, speaking with ataxia and male cousin with similar complaints. Hyperpigmentation adrenal insufficiency. Low yield but treatment is supportive diet and Lorenzo's oil lipid mix consisting of glycerol triolate and glycerol triarcate in a ratio of 4 to 1. 140. What is the next best step in a patient with no myasthenic gravis presence with muscle weakness, dyspnea, agitation, and disorientation? Intubation followed by treatment with plasmapheresis and IVIG. Plasmapheresis and IVIG are rapid therapies for myasthenic crisis, leads to respiratory failure, so requires early endotracheal intubation. 141. What is the likely diagnosis in a man with a history of ataxia, urinary incontinence, orthostatic hypotension, dysteatochokinesia, tremor, and rigidity in his upper and lower extremities? He shows mild disorientation, multiple system atrophy like shy drager syndrome, triad of motor abnormalities, Parkinsonian features, autonomic dysfunction, incontinence, orthostatic hypotension, erectile dysfunction, and cerebellar symptoms ataxia, dysteatochokinesia, similar to NPH, but this patient is lacking signs of dementia. Anti-Parkinsonism drugs are generally ineffective. Treatment is aimed at intravascular volume expansion for example floodrocortisone, salt supplements MSA, motor Parkinsonian, cerebellar, autonomic. 142. A patient was bitten by a bug on his right cheek. Now, both of his eyes are swollen and he has a constant headache. Exam shows erythema and swelling of the right cheek and bilateral eyelid edema. Bilateral extraocular movements are restricted, and his forehead and midface are bilaterally tender. Vitals show fever and tachycardia. What is the most likely diagnosis? Cavernous sinus thrombosis CN3, 4, V, and VI pass through cavernous sinus, which has anastomosis crossing midline thus, unilateral symptoms can rapidly become bilateral. 143. What is the next step in management in a patient with tingling in her feet, pain down the back of her legs, hyperreflexia, and an upgoing plantar reflex? HbA on C is 7.6. MRI of the spine While this may look like diabetic neuropathy, the UMN symptoms are more concerning as diabetic neuropathy is strictly LMN. Thus, an MRI should be performed to evaluate for cord compression. 144. What is the likely cause in a patient who experiences right-sided muscle weakness and mild facial droop five days following hospitalization and treatment for a subarachnoid hemorrhage? Cerebral vasospasm re-bleeding occurs in the first 24 hours. 145. A patient experiences right-sided muscle weakness and mild facial droop five days following hospitalization and treatment for a subarachnoid hemorrhage. What could have prevented this sequelae? Nimitipine prevents vasospasm. 146. What is the most likely diagnosis in a pregnant female who complains of difficulty hearing on the right side? She was recently treated for acute pyelonephritis. Neuro exam shows bone conduction is greater than air conduction on the right side. When placed on the middle of her forehead, she feels the vibration better in the right ear. Audiometry shows low frequency hearing loss. Which of the following is the most likely cause? Autosclerosis of the right ear Firstly, aminoglycosides can be used to treat pyelo and can cause autotoxicity. 
However, they wouldn't be given to a pregnant woman, and it produces conductive hearing loss. Autosclerosis occurs in middle age, and symptoms can increase during pregnancy. It has conductive hearing loss and low-frequency hearing loss hearing better in noisy environments compare this to perspicuities, older people, high-frequency loss, and hearing is worse in noisy environments. Remember, Weber will lateralize to the affected ear in conductive air loss. Stupid is but I just remember con air conductive affected. 147. A patient undergoing a Weber and Rin test has the following results. When the vibrating fork is placed on her right mastoid process, sound is heard for 10 seconds. When placed next to her ear, she can no longer hear the sound. When placed on her forehead, she feels vibration better on her right ear. What type of hearing loss is seen here and in which ear? Conductive hearing loss. In the right ear bone conduction greater than air conduction in affected ear and Weber's lateralizes to the affected ear. Extra, what if the patient complains of being able to hear better in noisy environments? Autosclerosis occurs in middle age and symptoms can increase during pregnancy. It has conductive hearing loss and low frequency hearing loss hearing better in noisy environments. Compare this to perspicuities, older people, high frequency loss, and hearing is worse in noisy environments. 148. What is the next best step in management in a young patient with anorexia who is hospitalized and develops confusion, ataxia, lateral gaze restriction, and nystagmus? Thiamine followed by glucose no lab or radiologic studies are necessary. 149. A young male presents after a MVA where he was thrown from his vehicle. GCS is 3 and the patient is intubated. His MRI is shown below showing numerous punctate hemorrhages at the gray-white matter interface. What is the most likely diagnosis? Diffuse axonal injury. 150. How does myasthenia gravis progress throughout the day? Worsens with use throughout the day. Patient has difficulty holding up their head after prolonged sitting or standing. 151. What is the next step in management? A young girl presents with headaches for the past month. She currently takes oral isotretinoin for severe acne. Exam shows papilledema and decreased visual acuity. Lumbar puncture shows opening pressure of 280. What is the next step in management? Withdraw the medication isotretinoin vitamin A derivative is associated with pseudotumor cerebri. 152. A patient presents with a one-day history of difficulty swallowing and blurred vision. He recently traveled to the Caribbean, where he ate seafood and went hiking. His oral mucosa is dry, pupils are dilated, and neck muscles are weak. Muscle strength is 1 out of 5 in the upper limbs and 5 out of 5 in the lower limbs. What is the most likely diagnosis? Botulism clostridium. Botulinum pathophysiology is loss of its release leading to descending paralysis, midriasis dilation, bilateral cranial neuropathies blurred vision, and dysphagia. 154. A 30 yo male presence with progressive lower extremity weakness. He recently had a urea in an episode of trigeminal neuralgia three months ago. Physical exam shows increased resistance to passive flexion, hyperreflexia, and positive Babinski's. The left arm shows loss of vibration and positional sensation. What will a lumbar puncture show? Oligoclonal bands. Perform a lumbar puncture if MRI or clinical exam is inconclusive. The patient's disseminated neurological deficits trigeminal neuralgia, spastic limb paralysis, upper limb sensory loss indicates a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis remember. Ghislaine Barr. Albuminocytologic dissociation can follow a campylobacter or viral infection, but has ascending paralysis with LMN symptoms hyporeflexia, paresthesias. 155. A patient presents with a hemisction of the right spinal cord brown sequard. The loss of pain and temperature seen in this patient will be contralateral to the lesion and will begin one or two levels below the lesion. 156. A hemischian injury at the level of the right T8 will produce loss of pain and temperature below the level of the T10 on the left. Due to damage of the spinothalamic tract. 157. A hemischian injury at the level of the right T8 will produce loss of pain and temperature below the level of the T10 on the left. Due to damage of the spinothalamic tract. 158. A patient with a history of hypertension, diabetes, and CKD presence with two hours of double vision. The right eye is down and out with ptosis. Right eye adduction and elevation are impaired. The pupils are equal and reactive to light. What is the most likely cause? Nerve ischemia secondary to diabetes produces CN3 palsy. Pupils are spared, thus parasympathetics spared indicating diabetic ophthalmoplegia. 159. A patient with a history of hypertension, diabetes, and CKD presence with two hours of double vision. The right eye is down and out with ptosis. Right eye adduction and elevation are impaired. The right pupil does not constrict in response to light. What is the most likely cause? Nerve compression. Parasympathetic nerves are being compressed for example. PCA aneurysm diabetes would spare the parasympathetic nerves and have normal pupillary response. 160. Diabetic ophthalmoplegia producing an oculomotor 3 nerve palsy will spare the pupils. Secondary to ischemia. 161. 
The most common cause of brain abscess is viridin strep often secondary to sinusitis. 163. What is the most likely cause in a patient with a first-time seizure who recently had rhinorrhea and nasal congestion? CT scan of the head shows a 4 cm ring enhancing lesion in the frontal lobe. Brain abscess secondary to strep viridin's 50% of cases. 164. Rapid diagnosis, patient comes in with headache, anterior bulging left eye, and limited lateral gaze. Patient has had right-sided nasal discharge and congestion for the past two days. Cavernous sinus thrombosis can be hard to differentiate between orbital cellulitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis so read the question stem carefully. Treat cavernous sinus thrombosis first with heparin or LNWH, inoxaparin plus or minus antibiotics in surgery cavernous sinus thrombosis. 165. What vessel is affected in a patient who presents with sudden onset right-sided weakness and urinary incontinence? Exam shows 4 out of 5 strength in the right upper extremity and 1 out of 5 strength in the right lower extremity. Babinski is positive on the right side. Anterior cerebral artery contralateral sensory and motor deficit predominantly in the lower extremity. Urinary incontinence is a key clue that may pop up during questions as well. 166. What type of tremor is seen with cerebellar syndrome such as alcoholism? Intention tremor. 167. What are the two major differentials for intention tremor? Cerebellar syndromes, multiple sclerosis alcohol can cause cerebellar damage. 168. What is the next best step in treatment for a patient with a history of multiple sclerosis who develops right arm weakness for 30 minutes at breakfast? Patient has a past medical history of hypertension and diabetes. Initiate aspirin and statin obviously. Need to do a standard stroke workup non-contrast CT, etc. The key here is the vasculopath patient with transient symptoms lesser than 24 hours likely has a transient ischemic attack neurological deficits related to MS may last days to weeks. Key point is not all neurological symptoms in MS are due to MS. 169. What pharmacotherapy should be included if pneumococcal meningitis is suspected? Dexamethasone. 170. What is the next best step in a patient with suspected meningitis with altered mental status? Antibiotics followed by CT scan LP is the best initial test, but CT is necessary to rule out space occupying lesions that may cause herniation. Answer head CT when any of the following is present, papilledema, seizures, functional neurology damage, confusion, immunocompromised only give antibiotics first if there is a contraindication to immediate lumbar puncture. 174. Viral meningitis is characterized by a normal glucose, protein lesser than 100, and lymphocytic predominance. If they're jerks about it and don't give you the lymphocyte counts, finding the answer with a normal glucose 40 to 70. That will help narrow down the options. Next look for the protein should be lesser than 100. If there are two options with lymphocytic predominance, lesser than 100 protein and normal glucose, then 177. What is the method of transmission in neurocysticercosis? Ingestion of eggs from human feces and intestinal teneoses. Transmission is via ingestion in raw, undercooked pork. In neurocysticercosis, transmission is via eggs and feces. 178. What is the most likely diagnosis in a patient with right-sided tinnitus and sensorineural hearing loss in the right ear? Acoustic neuroma sensorineural hearing loss equals air conduction greater than bone conduction with lateralization to the unaffected ear. 179. CSF rhinorrhea is the leakage of CSF through the anterior nares is a common sign of an anterior basilar skull fracture. Lycoria is leakage of CSF from the subarachnoid space through an external opening may show a halo sign rapidly expanding clear sign of surrounding blood. 181. Lycoria is the leakage of CSF from the subarachnoid space and is associated with a halo sign or raccoon sign or battle sign. This indicates a basilar skull fracture. 182. What is the diagnosis of a patient who was in a vehicle accident who begins to have blood-tinged sputum draining from his nostrils? The fluid shows up as a clear ring of fluid surrounded by blood when it is put on the gauze. Anterior basilar skull fracture This is lycoria which may show a halo sign. 183. Bilateral periorbital ecchymosis raccoon eyes are associated with an anterior basilar skull fracture. Posterior basilar skull fracture will show battle sign. 185. Cerebral perfusion pressure will decrease as a consequence of elevated ICP. CPP equals MAP, ICP if ICP rises, CPP diminishes. 186. Hypertension in the Cushing triad is a consequence of elevated intracranial pressure and is due to a compensatory activation of the sympathetic nervous system. Maintains cerebral perfusion and increases systolic BP. 188. Otitis externa or media is characterized by a conductive hearing loss. 189. What is the definitive treatment of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Surgical clipping endovascular coiling second choice clipping is the occlusion of the neck of an aneurysm with the help of metal clips following a craniotomy. 190. What is the definitive treatment for epidural hematoma? Epidural hematoma is a surgical emergency due a craniotomy. 191. What is the treatment in an elderly patient with a chronic subdural bleed from a recent fall who presents with headache, vomiting, and weakness? 
He is not oriented to time and place. Surgery craniotomy patients with subdural hematomas can be treated conservatively if there are no signs of herniation or lesser than 10 millimeters. 192. What should a person be advised to avoid if they are being treated for H. pylori with a two-week course of antibiotics? Their history is notable for an allergy to amoxicillin. Avoid alcohol metronidazole is used as a substitute for H. pylori infections in patients with amoxicillin allergies. 193. What are some risk factors for spinal epidural abscess? IV drug use, diabetes, distant infections, UTI, cellulitis, etc. Invasive procedures. 194. Transient global amnesia typically presents with an anterior grade amnesia and is often precipitated by psychological stress. A typical feature is repeatedly asking the same questions, with identical intonation and choice of words, despite the absence or cessation of any stimulus known as broken record phenomenon or perseveration. 196. What is the most likely diagnosis in a young runner who complains of neck pain, headache, right-sided weakness, and vision loss after his football game? CT scan is normal and duplex ultrasound shows absence of flow in the internal carotid artery. Carotid artery dissection patient likely also experienced a TIA secondary to loss of flow characterized by weakness and amaurosis fugax. 197. What is the next best step for a young woman who runs a marathon and complains of neck pain, headache, right-sided weakness, and vision loss? She recently completed a marathon. CT scan is normal and duplex ultrasound shows absence of flow in the internal carotid artery. Heparin and oral anticoagulation for 3 minutes 6 mo. Also can do with antiplatelet agents for one-year treatment should be initiated after an intracerebral hemorrhage has been ruled out. 198. What is the most likely diagnosis in an elderly female who presents with downward gaze palsy, postural instability, bradykinesia, and upper extremity rigidity? Progressive supranuclear palsy MRI shows atrophy of midbrain structures with intact pons one of the Parkinson plus syndromes along with Lewy body and multiple system atrophy. 199. Ankle edema and libido reticularis are side effects of amantadine. 201. Rapid diagnosis, cherry red macula, hyporeflexia, hepatosplenomboli, Neiman Pick's finger melanase.